So welcome back to another episode of 5 Minutes with Cyril. I want to talk today about the least squares approach. So what is least squares and what can we do with it? So least squares is a technique which allows us to infer parameters or states based on observations that we have. So it is a technique for state estimation and it is a very popular one. It has been developed by Carl Friedrich Gauss around 1795 um, known as the Methode der kleinsten Quadrate, and had its first showcase in 1801 when Gauss was able to predict the orbits of the planet Ceres very accurately, better than anyone else was able to do it, and this made the least squares approach popular. It was also used in the 1820s in order to measure the Kingdom of Hanover and in order to estimate point locations in the environment based on observations. So what you need to do in order to use a least squares approach is you need to be able to map your parameters or your unknowns or your states into what I call predicted observations using a so-called observation function. So you have a function f which takes as input the states or your parameters and it should generate predicted observations. So what should you observe given those parameters would be the correct ones. And what you then do is you compare those predicted observations with the actual observations that you have obtained. And then you try to vary the parameters um, of that uh, observation function so that the predicted observations are as close as possible to the actual observation that we obtained. So that you then generate parameters which are in line with the actual observations that we have obtained. And the error that we are minimizing is the sum of the squares of those errors. And that has led to the name least squares because we are minimizing the sum of the squares um, of the errors consisting of the discrepancy between what we are expected to observe and what we actually observed. And is used for a large number of problems starting from mapping, localization, SLAM, um, camera calibration, bundle adjustment and a large number of other problems. So what we, however, assume in the least squares approach, at least in its basic form, is a linear dependency between the parameters that we have and those predicted observations. And if there is no such linear dependencies, we actually need to linearize our problem um, in order to solve it using the technique that Gauss has proposed. So how do we linearize a problem? And in the real world, we always have to linearize because the majority of our problems are nonlinear. So we need to compute Jacobians um, used in a Taylor expansion or to linearize our problem and, and then solve this approximative linearized problem in the end. For that, we need to build up a so-called A matrix, which is built up based on the Jacobian information and maybe some uncertainties that we have about our measurements. And in the end, the most computationally manning task is solving a linear system of the form AX equals to B. And so most of the computational resources are spent on solving this potentially very large system. If we solve this problem, then we have found a new set of parameters that better describes um, the observations or predicts the observations. Um, if it was a nonlinear problem, we need to iterate this process because we have actually not solved our actual problem, we just have solved a similar problem, and now we kind of have a better initial guess and kind of can repeat this process over and over again so that we hopefully converge to the right solution. What you also need to do in real world problems, you typically have to deal with outlier measurements. So you will have some observations which are grossly wrong and you need to take that information into account to not diverge to a wrong solution or diverge into a wrong local minima. And for that, you need techniques such as robust kernels that you can use in order to downweight the effect of these outliers or gross errors and then focus only on those which appear to be the right ones, but there's in the end no guarantee that you end up in the global minimum. You will end up in a minimum, but not in the global one. Um, and so your initial guess matters. For the better your starting point for the least squares techniques, the better your result um, will be, uh, because you're more likely to converge into the right minimum and then find the correct solution for your parameters. If you want to implement a solution to a least squares problem that you want to solve 
on your own, then you don't have to do that from scratch. There are existing solvers out there that you can use, which dramatically simplify your life. Some examples are G2O, Ceres, or GTSEM, which you can use. And the only thing that you need to do is basically formulate your problem in the language of that solver. So basically defining your states and defining this observation functions as well as your observations. I hope that was useful and a good starting point for studying these squares. So thank you for your attention.